Hi, welcome. In this video, I will show you how to add reshade to the long dark. So we have the long dark that we have it installed. So now we can go to reshade website. I have it open. That's the website. Uh, what do you need to go? Go download. And let it run. Uh, click here to select a game and manage the reshade installation. So we will see where this is game where this game is installed in the scene games the long dark. Okay. Which rendering API does the TLD use? Uh, it uses a direct uh, 3D. So what do we want? Here we can see uh, which effects we want installed. So we want to have Quint by Mighty Mark Fly. These are the best shaders. Uh, of course, you can select them all, but then you will get a really long list. Let me just uh, Dev 3D. Uh, no, this is for stereo. I want to see. Okay, we, okay, display dev. This one is really important just to see if we did install this properly or we did set up. Yeah, that should be enough. Uh, let's go to OK. And we do not need to edit the reshade settings, but I will leave this window on the screen. Let's, let's launch the long dark. Okay, we can see this reshade at the top. Uh, this means that uh, it was installed and they did load. Sorry about the polish there. The game insists that I need to see this message in polish. And as you can, as you can see, the startup cinematic defaults to 1 FPS. And that's good enough. Uh, let's just start a new run, whatever, 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 whatever. We will not be t taking care, good care of Will this time. He will be just standing whatever, whenever he spawns. And it looks like uh, blinking a lot. Yeah, we can let that's the canary out, out there. So let's hope the bird does not pay us a visit. So we can press on the home button and uh, the mouse trapping does not really work in TLD. So we click on continue to also, uh, we don't really have a press it. So these are the uh, different shaders that we have available. But we need to first see activate the display dev. Okay, uh, finish reload. So let's go for split. And as you can see, we have a black screen, and we should have both dev map and normal map, and we don't have them. Uh, let's go to Direct 3D, and let's copy the dev buffer before clear operation. As you can see, we have a normal map, but it's upside down. Uh, so let's go to the... Uh, where was the... I want to go to the preprocessor set settings. Adding global preprocessor. Yeah, so we need to... Reshade depth input is upside down. Is currently set to zero. We need to edit this. So reshade dev buffer input is upside down. Go to one. And uh, now normal map is visible correctly, but the dev buffer is not. So let's go to where. How did we get? The normal map. Did I include that in my short tutorial? 
Okay, so let's go back to the preprocessor settings. And we know that the dev input is reverse. Let's put that to one. Okay, we have some dev information. So that's good. Objects that are far away are white and objects that are close are black. Uh, however, if we take a look at this closely and where was it? Basically, uh, what I want to show is that the dev map uh, is not working correctly. So let's set a keyboard shortcut, numeric numpad one, as our shortcut to enable and disable these settings. So if we take a look at the chimney over there, we will see that now is in the left corner, but now it isn't. So it means that Everything is moved a little bit. This is because the dev buffer is a little bit bigger than uh, what we see on the screen. So let's move along that over here and move the tutorial. The tutorial addresses this a little bit. So we see that the dev buffer needs to be scaled and then offset. So let's go to badges that this one is really resistant to uh, the buffer display def resistant to mouse input. You need to go ahead and add reshade def input scale. So by clicking on this plus icon, we will be able to type and add this setting in. One point zero forty five. Let's exit out of the menu. And we can already see that uh, it's a little bit closer. If we take a look at this edge, uh, not really. We need to still set the offset. Let's disable this, go back to badges, go to setting and turn on the display dev. And we'll need to add the offset. This should the buffer offset. And this one is your screen screen x minus pi of our x. Uh, and that amounts to minus 56 for this resolution. However, we are running at uh, normal HD. So let's bring out the calculator. All right. And let's go to the 3 d We will see that the dev buffer is uh, 190.76. Still minus 56. Okay, and let's add the other one, and that will be also 32. Let's just calculate that uh, quickly. So buffer dot y, our buffer is 1112 minus 180, 32. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, we're out of the menu. I guess this really works only for that resolution. So let's just jump to full screen. Okay, let's check now. Uh, I think that display def is ignoring our settings. Okay, so show live preview uh, is unchecked 
let's check now okay as you can see now it aligns perfectly so this live preview allows you to just edit the values over here instead of preprocessor however this will only apply to the display dev but we want to apply this forever and ever okay so now we have display dev set what we can add now is for example screen space ambient conclusion so tld has some ambient conclusion by default but if we take a look at these corners i don't see any ambient occlusion let's just go to display and quality let's disable ambient occlusion and like there is zero, zero, zero difference so for mxo it's best to have only one ambient occlusion let's add a shortcut number two to this and already as you can see we have shadows in the corners and that adds quite a lot of depth to this, uh, to this scene. Let's crank uh, these to 32 samples uh, and what else we can add? I think fade out end, uh, this could be increased a little bit for DLD like on 1.4 Okay, so we have shadows. Uh, what else uh, I really recommend for the long dark uh, is the sharpen. This is an advanced sharpen. Uh, it will just... Okay, let's add a numpad 3 to show the difference. It brings out the details that are blurred a little bit in the long dark. I really like this effect. Makes everything pop a little bit more. Okay, and now uh, I will go to the page section. Let's just check if this will still work in a window. Okay, let's check the display. Offer no, it, it moves a little bit, so you need to adjust the offset. Uh, I will go back to the full screen then. Uh, but we have global elimination. So let's go to edit reshade settings. Uh, no, how do we install this again? I think we will need to go to the folder of the long dark reshade shaders and just copy this in and I think the texture is also needed I don't know if the license is needed, but let's just copy it in. Uh, so to get the global elimination, you need to go through a paywall uh, on Marty McFly website. So yeah, just go over here, throw like five bucks uh, the way of this guy is really not much. Okay, uh, I think reshade allows to reload everything. Yeah, and you can see we have global elimination. So we can add global elimination, and as you can already see, uh, there is some change. So let's add a numpad key to, for this, and I will quickly go through the settings. So we have the ray length. We have the extended ray, uh, ray length multiplier in the background. I set this to one. Amount of rays, you can increase that. Uh, I advise at least like 16 steps. Z thickness, 
uh, in, and this shader doesn't, doesn't know how thick the objects are. In TLD, we have some sprites for grass. They are not very thick, so we need to bring, bring this down to 0.1 or even 0.09. In this both option, I keep them on. I increase the ambient occlusion to at least six and a half. And fade out range 2.4. However, please note that ambient uh, ray tracing global illumination doesn't really know about fog. So if you are in a fog, then trees in the fog will still be visible because of ray tracing. In the preprocessor, uh, what we need is to add the material type. We need to add smooth normals. And we need to add image-based lighting. And I don't really know what infinite bounces do, but I also keep them over here. And next bounce weight, uh, I go to like point, point 0.7. Image-based lighting intensity, let's go to one. Don't really know what this do. I think it takes color from the scene and allows uh, that surface to bounce light also with this color so it changes the color of the light that is hitting this surface and this two setting i asked marty for an explanation but we need to catch him again and see the difference uh, so we don't need display depth we have sharpen we have nxmo and we have global illumination uh, let's adjust the Order. So this is effect will be drawn uh, one over the other. So we have the MXO for the uh, really small difference shadows, so small small distance shadows. We have the global inhalation on on four. So as you can see, it's making quite a big difference. We can see some reflections, and uh, it's bringing the brightness up of the whole scene. And for example, this red. Uh, this is a bell, I think, or something for fishing. It's really reflecting red light into the scene. Hmm. Okay, so that's how you can set up your global illumination. These settings are a bit over the top. I will tone, the, tone them down in my playthrough, but this is how you can do it. I hope this was helpful. See you guys.